Who are you and who are you working for? I'm Alyssa Braun. Who do you think I am? I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty, and I'm walking around in these high heels all day, and I have blisters on my feet. And I'm like, Kyle, the KGB! <laughs> he said it at the beginning of the fucking movie! And she's KGB. What is happening? Hello, and welcome back to the Better, Better, Better Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should, too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, joined, as always, the other host of this glorious show, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, we're going back to the 80s. Oh, yeah. That's why I wore my 80s Bucky. Sh- I don't know if it's an 80s. Not just, not just 80s. We are going to a uh, savant of the independent market. Really? One, Brandon Lee. <laughs> Is he a savant of the independent market? I mean, like, what's the most well-known thing he's done? The Crow. The Crow. Which is... is that, yeah, is that the old... Like, I don't know anything about Brandon Lee other than The Crow. He, he, so. He's done some great indie films. Okay. Well, this is definitely one of them. We're talking about Laser Mission. Michael Gold has a mission on his mind. You didn't tell me who he was or why he was so important. The enemy on his tail. Alyssa! Two people blew this operation from the start. Laser mission. I wish you. I seriously wish it. It was that with like synth music. I uh, disagree because the, the the theme song in this is is amazing, incredible. It's one of the best theme songs we've had in a very long time. It, 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 we probably haven't had a good theme song like this since Drug Runners. Drug Runners. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm trying to think. There's also, I don't remember, no, because uh, Drug Runners was before um, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Yeah. It, <laughs> hard Ticket to Hawaii. It's a hard ticket to Hawaii. We're great singers. Yeah, you can uh, hire us for your wedding. I'm trying to think. There's probably another one. But the, yeah, it's been, we don't get, those are all those like early 90s, late 80s bangers. <laughs> but like this, this, the theme song of this, it just repeats over and over. He's a mercenary man. He's a mercenary man. Mercenary man. I looked up because I was so into this theme song and it comes in <laughs> over and over again, which I was so excited about throughout the course of the movie. I looked up who it was written by and performed by. It was written by. Please tell me by Brandon Lee. <laughs> no, amazing. Mark Knopfler. Um, and uh, <laughs> he's the former lead guitarist of Dire Straits. The people who did Sultans of Swing and Money for Nothing. <laughs> My dad plays a bunch of yeah. Dire Straits songs. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, he was he uh, he wrote and performs the song, and yeah, it's got some it's it's a it's a real banger. I love a uh, his heart beats like a hammer, like the backbeat of a song. <laughs> his heart beats like a hammer, like the backbeat of a song. I love I love it so much. It's so good. so good. And he's doing he's doing almost like a I don't want to say Bruce Springsteen, but he's got that like his heart beats like a hammer. <laughs> like it's like this very like gritty yeah, kind yeah. of. It's and amazing. the it's like crazy thing is it's like Brandon Lee's second film. Is it really? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Because I don't know how many he did, but I I did look through his briefly through his IMDb, and it was mostly yeah like beer B tier type of movies until The Crow. Um. So uh, uh, also. Importantly, I don't know if you knew this, the director of this film, I don't know, I didn't even look at his name because it doesn't matter, but he is the director of Stick Fighter. Yes, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, because they, they have one actor in there that they reuse from Stick Fighter. Wait, which you know, one? The mustache dude. Is that guy yes. in Stick Fighter? Yes, I okay. get it. The dude who shotguns that guy in the pool. Yeah, oh, that is it. Him. Yes. Holy <laughs> shit, you're right, it is him. I knew he looked familiar. He's like a CIA agent or whatever mm. in this one. I saw that. Like, hang on, I know that bald-headed mustache oh, combo. Oh, fuck yeah, that guy. Yeah, so it's from the same director as Stick Fighter, and I was like, if Brandon Lee doesn't ride somebody down something and <laughs> punching them in the face, I'll be very... Disappointed. <laughs> I will say it is disappointing that the level of uh, of, of stunts 
was not quite as on par as Stick Fighter with a no, certain aspect. No, it had some good stuff. It had some good ones, but it didn't have like the insanity. It didn't of Stick have Fighter. anything bonkers <laughs> like Stick Fighter did. <laughs> It had some good ones overall, but it didn't. It, I mean, there was no spoilers. There's no moment that is on par with <laughs> crotch riding a guy down a spiral <laughs> staircase, punching him in the face. Um, so uh, I assumed that this was going to be like a James Bond knockoff based on the opening uh, and the and the and the opening credits. And it's being like, oh, uh, uh, the Soviets are getting a, a, a diamond to turn into a mil killer laser. I was like, OK, this is a James Bond movie, like a Moonraker ripoff. And I guess it is kind of close to Moonraker in the sense that it's like super goofy. It would I be wasn't nice expecting it to be as goofy we as We got was. to see any implementation of that technology against somebody. Never. Because. It's just like the MacGuffin of our uh, of our light blast film with Eric Estrada. At least then, oh yeah, that was we see the, some people the, melt. Yeah, yeah we see was... some motherfuckers melt. <laughs> no! In this one, it's just like, no, we're just fighting over a diamond to be that used. Could be used to kill people. Yep. Don't worry, it'll happen. Just not in this movie, because. <laughs> He's it's yeah, that was disappointing. I agree. Um, but it is a 526 carat diamond. Uh, it's bigger than the hope diamond and all the other ones. They say it's called the Verbeek, which is an interesting. And it is, uh, it is under uh, in, Brian. Is it under heavy, heavy security? No, it's just sitting in a <laughs> well. I think they're doing a is it an auction to witness the unveiling of the most precious and the largest diamond to come from the continent of Africa? I guess I am, for I, it. Because we, I think it's supposed to be an even, auction. Even then, yeah, it, it looks like people who rented like an airport Hilton room. Yes, it is literally like the <laughs> smallest uh, room you could reserve at the local <laughs> hotel. It's not even like the grand ballroom. It's like the little accessory or you know utility room that they rent out for very affordable pricing. Uh, and yeah, it's this apparently 526 carat diamond, literally more expensive than it, like the Hope diamond in anything in the world. Larger than the hoop, more spectacular than the column. Measured at 526 carats. Uh, and I love the guy, the, the auctioneer or whatever, is like, all right, time to celebrate with some champagne. And the champagne bottle explodes. <laughs> Blows and smokes. <laughs> like, it's great. Like, noxious black smoke, like, billows everywhere. And I guess it's, like, knocks him out. Or maybe it kills him. I don't know. But a guy in a gas mask rolls in and steals the diamond. Dun, dun, dun. That's our cold open. Oh, man. Um... Uh, and then we get the theme song again, and I was like, "Hey, we have the the baller like steel like like laser mission come in." Laser mission, which let's talk about that. What a terrible name it for is. a movie! Like it's awful. It's. It, like at least with something like Moonraker, like there's some of like you don't know what that means. Like it's like what is that? Mm, intrigue, laser mission. It's, it's a mission when there's a laser involved. I guess. I'm trying to think of, oh, could, well, there's could, not because it would be nice it. if they um, if they were to use like something involving gold because that was our main character. Oh yeah, I mean his yeah his name's Michael Michael Gold. Mike, but every Mikhail. But every, <laughs> Mikhail the, the, but since they're Soviets, he always calls him Mikhail Gold. I shall pluck out Mikhail Gore's eyes with my fingers. Uh, I love this theme song, though. I can't get enough of it. Our guy shows up. He's uh, on a mission. He shows up at a pier. Um, he's flying, and he, he ends up on a pier. <laughs> yeah, he just jumps, jumps down, off like, the, like, almost for no reason. For literally no reason. I was like, dude, you could have walked another 10 feet and just, like, walked down the steps to this guy, but okay. okay. The, the part where he's walking under the pier, and then it really kicks in, and it goes, Mercenary man! It's so good. I love this theme song. I fucking listen to it all day. I, I have numerous notes where I was like, why is this ever stopping in the movie? Just the entire, t I want an hour and 24 minutes of mercenary man. His heart beats like a hammer, but to the beat of a song, whatever the fuck stupid lyrics. I wanted it the whole time. Uh, but then he runs into fucking Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> Which for for kids who don't know, uh, for 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 the the kids, we'll put it that way, you youngsters. He was the voice of Mermaid Man. <laughs> I want to eat my meatloaf. If you don't get out of here, 
hands and by the power invested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. Yeah, yes, yeah, probably the <laughs> the thing uh, young younger generations most know him by, but it's been in lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and he's he's playing a scientist, a professor. <laughs> I guess German professor right? Braun. He, I, I guess an, he's supposed he's to be German. He's putting on an accent yeah. for this, and it's it's very uh, interesting. <laughs> the Americans, you mean? And how much are they willing to pay? You want money? Americans always seem to think that people want money. Yeah, uh, I guess he's supposed to be German, but he's being held, kind of held captive by the the Soviets. Um, and he's they basically kind of like the thing with like in World War Two, well, no, like I, the Nazis. I, I thought he was like he was trying to hide, basically. Was he in the middle of hiding? I, no, because he was already working for them, I believe. Well, then why do they need to dart him? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he was on the run. But because they he does say like, oh, he's like in this conversation with Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee's like, here, I want to take you back to the U.S., get you out of here. And he's like, good. I don't want to make weapons anymore. So like I thought that was like mm. to me, it's it was like the idea of like during World War Two when we went and like took a bunch of like the Nazi scientists back and we're like build bombs for like that's like the idea of what they were going for, mm. I think, with this. Um and he, uh, but anyway, I'll so make they, your death laser for us. Yeah, basically. But he's like, I don't want to make laser weapons anymore. I want to just, uh, he's like some sort of theoretical physicist or something. And he wants to do good or whatever. Uh, but then he gets sleep dart. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> immediately. They both get sleep darted by, uh, the Soviets, including our general Kalishnikov. <laughs> is his name. It's the most Russian name. <laughs> What do we name our Russian villain? Uh, I don't know. What is that one gun called? Oh, that's right. All right. Let's name him after that. What is that one Russian gun called? Um, I love it. Oh, uh, boy. He get, they take him to prison. They take mm. both him. Well, we don't know what happened to Ernest Borgnine at this point, but they take uh, Michael Gold to prison. And uh, he's, he's trapped in prison, and they're like, look, you can work for us. Or no, come out on TV and say you work for the... I don't know. They have, like, they're going to yeah. try to blackmail him or something. Yeah, they're, they're basically using him as a crisis situation to be like, look, it's the U.S.'s fault. You tell the world you're a spy working for America. I don't work for America. No. I work for money. Yeah, they're they're coming after us and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, kind of that kind of thing. And he's like, no, I won't do it. Uh, and he ended up just breaking out of the prison. Yeah, like, the, because the security is just... Yeah. Also, we should state this isn't take place in the Soviet. A, it's in Angola? Africa. It's it. Well, they call he calls it. Uh, he says the name of the country later, and it's. I looked it up, and I couldn't find it as an actual country, but rather a region in a country in Africa. Okay. Um. Yeah, I can't. I wrote it down somewhere, but anyways, he. Um. It, it's like the Soviets are like occupying some african country mm. and that's where this is all taking place he's not like in the ussr or something well i guess maybe it, it might be part of i don't know i don't i don't know what this, i think it's all fictional anyways like i said i don't think it's yeah. a real country even um and he, so he he breaks out of his prison and <laughs> there's some weird okay camera work that first shot where he grabs that throwing knife and hits that guy and the camera does a pan was pretty it was pretty successful uh like sort of camera work there to make it look like he actually threw a knife into a dude's chest um but then he he starts rolling around this prison, just murdering yes, everybody, everyone. <laughs> fucking everybody. Also, there, there's there's a part where he's escaping and he's getting like I don't know if he's getting a weapon or knockout. He goes into but like like, a, yeah. like somebody some somebody in the prison is like holding that dude. He breaks and he his just, neck. He breaks his neck and then he just leaves. And the dude's like, "Hey, I just helped you out, man." <laughs> yeah, he just leaves him there. But yeah, he goes into like a, a a room, like I guess it's like the armory or whatever, and he gets one of those shotguns that has like the barrel feed, <laughs> yeah. and that's what he's using the whole rest of this prison break. Um, and he's running around the courtyard of this prison, just shoot shotgun blasting everybody that comes by. And have you noticed that he he really loves shooting his gun sideways? Both several times he gets like this shotgun. He has it. He holds it sideways to shoot at people, and then he eventually, I guess, the shotgun runs out of uh, shells, and he grabs uh, like an AK or something from another guy, he and then he's holding that sideways. sideways. I was like, shoot straight. What are you doing? All right, uh, hip shots, no iron sight. Go yeah, on, he's just like blah, blah, blah. three sixty no scope. He does, he does occasionally aim down the sights, but very rarely. Uh. Um, and then he, uh, the, the way that's all, he gets, he kills like everybody. He's fighting the last guy oh, up by the guillotine. We're, uh, we're, we're also introduced to our like comically stupid villains. Who, are they in this part? I think they are. No, I don't are, think are they're, they're here at yet. The beginning? No, that's when he lands after this. It's when he, it, no, that's when he, 
he g- escapes, goes back to the CIA, gets briefed, and then parachutes in. Oh, right. That, so we're not right. quite there yet, but he, the, we're almost there because he he guillotines a guy. Uh, <laughs> they have a guillotine. That's how this prison yeah. executes people. Yeah, is like, a guillotine like a gift from whatever country in the 1800s? Yeah, the France, I would assume. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he, he he the guy. But it's so disappointing that in this kind of movie we don't get a fake head. Boop, 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 roll. Like he kicks the guillotine, it falls, and it just cuts. And oh. it's like, I guess it's going for like a PG 13 or well, something. Considering the other edits in this film, I think it's just bad editing. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of bad editing in this film. Terrible. Considering editing. the other edits we get throughout the movie, this is like nothing. Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted that cheesy fake head rolling down the. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling down the gate, like the the stage where the guillotine. Oh, is. don't worry, we get some great fake heads later. <laughs> do we? Yes. Did I? I watched this an hour ago. I don't know how do I not remember the beat. All right, we'll we'll get there. I guess. <laughs> oh, you mean in the other movie? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. No, in this movie. Yeah. We'll get there. You have to remind <laughs> me. I don't. know. It's where the professor is taken into the room where they're like, oh, "What are you going to do with me?" Oh, yes. And they show us some great, Inc- fake truly heads. incredible. Master level props. Before you kill yourself, think of this room and your daughter in it. What kind of monster are you? Um, so uh, we find out he goes back. He's getting debriefed this by the CIA, I guess, or whatever it is. And this is where the, the guy from Stick Fighter, the yeah. villain is with the yes. mustache. So good. Um, and he's they have some great sort of like. He's a merc- He's a mercenary he, man, as we have learned from yes. the theme song. He doesn't actually uh, work for them. Contra- CIA contract. Yeah, like basically. Um, and they're like, "All right, but we need you to go." But you, you know, you weren't able to save Braun. We need you to go back in and get him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's say I get him back. What's in it for me? I want more than just a boost in my CIA credit rating. One million dollars. Uh, we know w- w- his daughter is in this country. Go meet up with her. Um, and he says here, Kyle, and I got I have so many notes about this. I swear the CIA guy says Braun's daughter is in this country. She's a veterinary scientist and KGB. He says that, right? What did I? I'm not. Did you hear that? I, I maybe uh, I will. Now we're, we're, we're going to stop. No, we're going to. I'll, I'll definitely drop it in. But I'd have to know if I oh, no. it makes the rest of my notes useless. If he doesn't say and he's KGB. Hold I, on. I, it sounds familiar. Planning some sort of laser mission. Contact his daughter, Alyssa. She's a doctor of veterinary medicine. She's in Kuwana. And she's KGB. And she's KGB. Now, okay, so I need I knew I heard that. The I have so many notes about her character based on that fucking line, line that makes no sense over the court. We'll get to it. Okay. Like everything feels like a trap. She's leading them on. And stuff like that. Well, I just don't understand. We'll get to it. But so uh, we'll get to it because it's it, there's so many times where Brandon Lee's character seems to not understand. He's like, where'd you learn to do these things? You carry a gun and you're not afraid to use it. You can outdrive the best of them. Did you just get to the personal question? Who are you and who are you working for? Oh, you can shoot a gun? Oh, and they told you she was KGB in the first time you they ever told you about her. And then, but on top of that, throughout the movie, she fluctuates back and forth from like, I, I'm very capable, she's a KGB agent, to I'm a damsel in distress, I'm Willie from Temple of Doom. Like, I don't understand what her character is. And the fact that they say she's KGB it's like, well, why isn't she just a badass then? Because she's not KGB. Oh, uh, I. That shit drove me crazy over the course. That her character it makes no sense. Well, then we'll talk about it. And let me tell you something else, Buster. You're not my idea of a dream date, you asshole. That's Mr. Asshole, you. Uh, but yeah, as we mentioned in there, we get the title drop. The Soviets are planning some sort of <laughs> so laser, laser mission. <laughs> So uh, our guy then airdrops into a Kiwana or whatever the the wherever the daughter is, which is near Kavango, mm-hmm. I guess. Again, I'm not sure if these are actual places or not. Um, 
and so he 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 parachutes in and he he dresses up and pretends to be he finds like a Cuban military sect yeah I guess again part associated with the USSR or whatever or the Soviets um and he pretends to be their captain Capitan and, Capitan Rob What do you just see Nada El Capitan Correct. And he's like ah, slapping people and like you know just like walking around being a, a, <laughs> those, a, those a hard that ass. Dude, were great. Yeah, just walking around being a hard ass uh, with a fake mustache. Um, and uh, this is where we're introduced to to like the Keystone Cop characters of this movie, which is like our two bumbling uh, Cuban uh, soldiers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the, so he finally he, he he steals their jeep or whatever. It's the whole point of the scene, and he and he finds her. Uh, again, she's working at a she's like working at a zoo or something like yes. doing animal stuff. Also, Mikael Gold is yeah. a master of disguise. Master of disguise. He 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 comes up across uh, uh, comes up to her dressed as like a beggar. He's like covered in in stuff and he's like mo- asking for money. I do like how she gives him money and then he just kind of keeps it like it's not brought up. Like, yeah, and then also just like immediately drops his act. It's like well, what was the point yeah. of the act if you're just gonna walk up to him and be like, hey, what's up? It's me. Like it's like yeah. you could have just done uh, whatever. Sure, Miss Braun, I need to talk. I was the last person to see your father before he vanished. Um, but he uh, he explains to her, and as soon as she talked, I was like, so she's just American. Because Professor Braun is, like, German. She's yeah. And she's just American. Yeah. Your photographs don't do you justice. Meet me tonight at 9, the Nianza restaurant. And that's his daughter? Yep. All right, cool. Um and uh, he uh, so he, he he wants to meet up with her later at a restaurant. He's like, uh, "Come on, well I'll meet up and I'll explain that I got to." How, how are you gonna know it's me, dude? <laughs> you're you're gonna say that right now after you <laughs> just dropped your entire act? Yeah. Uh, so they meet up and basically he tries to explain that. Um, Oh, there's also a chase after this. I forgot. There's yeah. a big chase scene where he falls through a roof at like and falls on somebody's dinner table and like destroys it. But he gets chased all around this building by, makes by the corny Soviets. one-liners. And uh, stuff. I just dropped in to say bon appetit. <laughs> I just dropped in to say bon appetit. <laughs> I will say Lord. he's pretty charismatic. He pulls off this he is but it's like it, it's the cheese meets the charis, uh, charisma yeah it. it's like, yeah absolutely yeah. it is it's a little similar obviously to a much lesser extent um to uh, to uh pierce brosnan and taffin where it's like this is not good dialogue <laughs> it's like not well written but a pretty charismatic actor <laughs> delivering yeah. it works yeah. okay still but pierce brosnan is also pierce brosnan yeah what goes on in this town is none of your business. As long as I'm living here, it is. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! Well, that's easily fixed. Yes, like I said, to a much lesser extent. Uh, and so he meets up with her for dinner after this big chase scene, and I lo- uh, <laughs> the camera's pushing in on them in the restaurant, and she's wearing this blue dress, like, with a plunging neckline, and I thought she was wearing a blue, like, a denim dress, and I was like, oh, that's so 90s, or so uh, fucking early 90s, late 80s. It's just a blue dress, unfortunately. I was really hoping it was going to be <sighs> denim. Uh, but her hair is peak yeah. 1989. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, this big. It's fantastic. Everything is, like, fluff. Yeah, it's, it's great. Hairspray. It's yeah. fucking great. Uh, and so they have some witty banter, you know, just some great, great a 80s witty, banter. Yeah. Banter. I never put price tags on women. It's much more fun taking them off. Some things come off very easily. <laughs> sex. I'm talking about sex. That's the joke. Sex. Um, so then they go, they leave together and they go to her dad's lab, I guess. Yeah. And he's not there. He's gone. No, here's the bonkers thing. Yes. So did you notice no. whenever they were going into his lab? Maybe. What, like you're talking about where they find the dude they who's find dying, right? Professor Rice or whatever. Did you notice the very is. beginning of that scene? They're opening, a do- they're opening a door. Do you know what that door was? That was a hidden bookcase door. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Very where, strange. Where the fuck? How did they know that? And I guess she knew where his or lab something. is, but why but that, that's just like, like, why not show something beforehand? The where setup of yeah, like the them, setup. like where, how do we get in there? And she's like here and then go. Yeah. Like, yeah. cause she knows how to get in there or whatever. Yeah. That, that's more intrigue. That's yeah. not like, just like, Oh, Hey, look, the secret doors 
fucking open. Well, and it's because, yeah, they don't even make a point of it. Like, we just kind of see it in the corner of the shot as he's mm. pushing it open. It's like, why if you had a cool hidden bookcase door, would you not, like, make it a thing? And, like, you know, like you said, they're trying to figure, he's like, well, where, this is where he told me to go for the lab, but I don't know where he is. And she's like, <laughs> you know, give him, like, a little bit of banter kind of thing where she's like, you idiot, <laughs> opens the door and walks in. I don't know. It, it, they literally they just gloss right over all of it. Um, but they find a, they call him professor. It's a different professor. It, it looks but who looks exactly yeah. like <laughs> Ernest Borgnine. Holy shit! I was like so confused. I was like, oh, the, oh, the, he's dead. Yeah. already. And then I was like, wait, that's not well, him. I, I, yeah, I, I thought it was ser I thought it was him up until she's like, where's my father? Yeah, professor, please, where's my father? Lord. Skeleton. And I was like, wait, you mean that's not your fu do you, Does he have a body Look double? Look at the line? eyebrow. Yeah, they had the same eyebrow. I looked up that actor. His name is Joe Stewardson. And he, I look at the pictures next to each other. Yeah, they're like, or just a doppelganger. Yeah, it was like he might have been his stunt double and stuff. I don't even know. It's wild. I was like, why would you cast somebody like that in that role? <laughs> It's so weird. What what are the, what are the casting criteria for our German scientists? You need to have notable eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah. And well, it's it's not even just the eyebrows. It's like everything about Every, yeah, his face exactly. shape is identical to Ernest Borgnine. It's so strange. Um, and then so they they do some more chasing and they get into another fight and this is where she she pulls out a gun and shoots some people. <laughs> when that first happened, I was like, the fuck is she hiding that thing? Well, yeah, she has it in a holster on her leg, and he's, like, surprised by this. And I'm like, dude, they told you she she's was KGB. KGB. Yes. What is happening? But it's like the movie forgot over the course of the rest of the film. It's like the movie forgot that the character at the beginning said, oh, by the way, she's KGB. And she's KGB. It's like the movie and our main character. Maybe that's a insert. Like maybe they that part where he says she's KGB early on was like an insert thing to justify why she has a gun to us. But it, it's like the movie straight up. For, it's infuriating. I had I was so mad the whole time watching this because of that stupid character point. But, but then every time Mercenary Man came in, Brian but then like, yeah, okay, right after this, okay, I, I'm okay with this. I literally have a note. <laughs> why are you surprised she has a gun or she has a gun and can shoot? You know she's KGB and then that cuts off and goes all caps, yes, more theme song. <laughs> We're the Uh, and they're getting they're in a big car chase. They're driving down. There's like dudes getting shot, falling off of jeeps onto the, pavement. The fact that this vehicle held up for as long as it did with yeah. the stunts they did to it, yeah. is incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> and uh, there's there's some some of those stunt guys eat shit. Like they're like fall off this jeep while well, it's moving at a pretty good clip yeah. directly yeah. onto pavement. And I was like, God, yeah, damn. they, they got to be going like at least twenty. At least like twenty. That. Yeah, they're sped it. They probably sped it up and post a little bit, but it's still like clearly moving pretty good. There there is an amazing work because like they're falling off this jeep and then they like everybody is like out of this jeep and it goes over like a stand or something like that yeah but there's a part where brandon lee's just unloading into it and it just comes to a complete stop and then it cuts and it's moving again <laughs> i missed that part <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite things during this scene is that every time we cut inside, they're in a our, our protagonists are in a uh, a VW bus mm -hmm. right now driving, and I love the camera, uh, the shot, um, and the wheels on the right hand side in this, I believe, um, and the camera keeps cutting inside, shooting from like the passenger seat in the front at the at, at uh, Alyssa, who's the the mm -hmm. female character driving, and it's like. I know it's on purpose, but it's like every time her dress is almost. Almost Dude. coming out to the point where you can see like the nipple, but not quite, Kyle. Hey, not hey, quite. That <laughs> is a great job by wardrobe. <laughs> it's I got the boob tape on, but it's just it's so cl it's so like perfectly like eighties writing that line of like there's a fucking deadly gun chase going on. You can almost see her nipple. It's so close, guys. Look, I promise. It's, maybe it's... next time you might be able to see her nipple on the next turn when we go into that shot again. You up the explosions and chase and gunfire, and then up the sex. <laughs> but this movie never, like, because there is a there's a love scene, but it's we don't like it just cuts. This movie very clearly must have been shooting for like a rating PG thirteen, or, or or even if that existed, I can't remember when that became a thing. Yeah, either PG thirteen or even maybe PG because there I, I think there's a little bit of language. There is like some f bombs and stuff, but there's not really much in the way of gore or like when people die, they just like 
fall over. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? There's a little bit of blood, but not much. It's very, like, sort of reserved in its violence and well, stuff. Well, all the, all the blood in this movie is reserved for uh, Brandon Lee bleeding internally in True. the last act of this movie. And being fine the entire time. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, um, also, I love that during this chase scene, the, they, like, the, 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 they play the theme song, but then it just ends. And so there's, like, 30 seconds with nothing and then the theme song kicks in yes. again, and I was like, yes! <laughs> Starts playing again. Uh. Um, and then they fucking crash into the ocean. Like, a bunch of... They end up on these docks, and there's, <laughs> yes. like, all this shit going on. There's fucking... It's a, it's a good car chase. It's pretty well done. I love there's one where a whole Jeep full of people just crashes <laughs> into the ocean. God. <laughs> Could you imagine like the waivers you'd have to sign off? For oh God, yeah. Out? Well, and and just the it's. I don't know. Yeah, because there's all kinds of, or at least, and I don't know where they filmed this, but there <laughs> tends to be all kinds of rules about like driving vehicles into like bodies of yeah, water because of salvaging. Yeah, too. the salvage shit and stuff. Yeah, it's not. You can't just drive a car into the ocean and leave it there. <laughs> but <laughs> sure. He's a Um, and during this whole chase, this is also th those guys. So the Jeep, the two of the guys in the Jeep that went in the ocean were the Cuban mm -hmm. uh, soldiers. And this is a plot point that I didn't realize was like a surprise. Yeah, no, it's, it wasn't. It wasn't. Is that the, I think it just proves that the other dude, the, the dude is, is an like idiot. an idiot. Yeah. So they, they climb out of the water and the, it's a it's a guy and, and a girl. Uh, and and the, the sergeant is, is the sergeant. And, and she's she was the sergeant from the first scene, like who was in charge mm -hmm. when um, Brandon Lee showed up and pretended to be above her or whatever. And but we find out that boobs. the other. Yeah, just the wettest of T-shirts. just So much boobs. Um, and our guy, uh, the other guy, which I don't know if we know any of their names, um, but the other guy, her partner mm. is like. You're a lady? And it's like, yeah, man. Yeah. She wasn't like, it didn't seem like she was hiding it before. No. She just had short hair, kind of. Okay, whatever, sure. <laughs> uh, it's fucking amazing. Also, I found that actress's YouTube channel because I was just looking up people while I was watching this oh, movie. Okay. And she has like very interesting dance videos where she does like aerobic dance videos. <laughs> like currently, right. it's very strange. <laughs> Don't put any of it in. <laughs> uh, but again, where'd you learn to drive like that? He asked, Brandon Lee asked the person who he knows as a KGB agent or supposedly knows as a KGB agent. Where'd you learn to drive like that? Long story. Uh, and this is where we're introduced to the evil German guy. Who's yes, holding yes. Brown Eckhart. Braun hostage. Uh, Eckhart, who is playing generic evil German... Whenever I Henchman. saw this dude, and we we get some some close ups of him, every single time I saw him, because he has like kind of like very distinguished hair, like uh, light color kind of yeah. curled up. I was like, is that the fucking museum curator from Ghostbusters two? But it wasn't. I looked oh, it up. Oh, it, it looks it looks a bit like, like him. him. To me, it looked like um, there's an actor, and I couldn't place who it was. He looked distinctly like somebody else to me, not that guy. And I looked him up, and he's also not the person I thought he was. And I can't even remember who I thought he was. Oh, um, it's some other German actor uh, who's been in a bunch of shit. I can't. It not yeah, which, which, I think the guy from Ghostbusters' name was like Johannes or something like yeah. that. Which is like, yeah. oh, okay, so maybe that's just a thing. This guy's much more um, like intimidating looking than the. Let me tell you something. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you too. Guy from Ghostbusters oh, too. Because that guy's guy like a dweeb. Yeah, he's a <laughs> fucking dweeb. He's, exactly. This guy looks more. Yeah, uh, looks pretty hardcore. But he's also he's he's got like a safari vest full. Yeah, of he's a big game hunter. He's a big game hunter, including the most dangerous game, <laughs> Kyle. Man, man. <laughs> uh, love it. He was. Uh, th this was the beginning of the Death Ring. <laughs> the Death Ring. The Death Ring. Uh, also, uh, this is where we get to see all his fake heads because he has trophies yes. of all of his hunts and including the worst fake heads I've seen in a it's movie incredible. in some time. It's incredible. The first one's like, eh, and then they get progressively worse to just like, that's like a Halloween, like a $5 a Halloween, Halloween prop. Like, yeah. it's terrible. <laughs> They're so bad. Uh, so now uh, our... our uh, 
what is Brandon? Oh, uh, Michael Gold, uh, mm -hmm. Brandon Lee, and uh, Alyssa are driving through the desert, and they need to they need to get through a checkpoint this to get somewhere. This shit is fucking. Right? They're trying I, to I get. Think it's, at what point do they lose? Do they, this is right after vehicle? this is where they lose the vehicle. Okay. They're, they're like driving through this checkpoint. They have to like get south somewhere or whatever, and mm. they got like we got to go through here. And they drive through and just murder everybody here. He's got a rocket launcher all of a sudden that he's shooting <laughs> at people and shit, just mowing down. And again, the, the thing that's wild to me about this is that he's just mowing down all these people, and it's all these like African soldiers mm. who, from what I can glean from the plot of the film, aren't really villains in the movie. They're no. just they're like being. They're like they're they're, like, they're just the, like the general military force that is of this country of, yeah. that the Soviets are like using and like forcing to work for them, and he's just murdering all of them. It's like they don't seem involved in this like anything that's going on here. In fact, their country has been like invaded they, by the they Soviets. Are at worst, using the force to like contain the diamond mines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's just like I'm pretty sure they're also victims in this situation because the Soviets came in and were like, "Fuck you, give a fuck you, give us your country," and yeah. they're like, "Oh fuck." And now he's just mowing uh, yeah, them all down. They're, they're effectively generic military, so it's just yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Just away. fucking kill him, I guess. Great. Um, but he just starts murdering all these people. Uh, and uh, but then the VW bus is no. no more. We lose the VW bus, and now they're just running through the desert she in give heels. You, she give credit to German engineering on the fact that it held up as long as it, it did. did. It did. In the arms of Uh, but now she's running through the desert in her high heels. <laughs> it's like, I don't think how well that would work, man. That but she loses them at one point. She does eventually get rid of them, yeah. In which case, I'd be like, okay, you're walking in the desert hot sand on your Oh, feet. yeah. Th there's a, a close-up shot of them in it, during the day walking on the sand. In the I was like, that would be so hot, mm. I feel like. I mean, I guess it wasn't because they were doing it. It was real, but it just... I, you know, because you, you've heard stories about like it, trying to in like in in certain parts of Africa and stuff where the desert, where it's in the sun all day, you like literally your feet will burn. Like yeah. you just like Ugh. scald the shit out of your feet. You can't walk barefoot on it. But they're like, no, nah, it's all right. Probably because they filmed that part on like a beach or something. Probably, yeah. <laughs> no, there there are some shots. They're very clearly like somewhat uh, in the desert. Yeah, like there are definitely some dune shots. Yeah, like. yeah, for sure. <sighs> um, and then as they're walking, he asks her, Kyle. After all this shit's going on, he turns to her and asks her, who are you and who are you working for? Who are you and who are you working for? I'm Alyssa Braun. Who do you think I am? I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty, and I'm walking around in these high heels all day, and I have blisters on my feet. And I'm like, Kyle, the KGB! <laughs> he said it at the beginning of the fucking movie! And she's KGB. What is happening? <laughs> Look... He's freelance for a reason. He couldn't pass the actual written oh, exam. God. Brandon Lee's character is a fucking Or I idiot. guess she wouldn't be working for the KGB anymore if she's, like, helping you. She would have mm. to be, like, a double agent or something, obviously. But still, I so fucking weird. But uh, at, at, at this point, on multiple situations, in the middle of this desert walk scene or whatever. Yeah, yeah, where they're just making their way through the desert. People are just randomly coming out of the like desert one person, and attacking them. One person Two. at a time. Well, but I mean well, one, one at a time. time. It's not yeah. like a group of people. It's it like starts one. off with the horse, right? No, it starts off with, the, they get to some ruins. Oh, I think yeah. it's the first one. And there's just a guy sneaking on top of the ruins with a bow oh. and arrow. <laughs> and he shoots one arrow and ditches the bow and tries to like jump on them and just gets murdered. Get murdered. Yeah, just uh, gets there's, killed. There's another guy who Brandon Lee like hides in the sand. And, <laughs> Comes and out of the them. sand. <laughs> Rah, fucking. Uh, there's a guy who just runs at them on a horse. This is He's the weirdest a, scene. This makes what so little sense. What the fuck is happening here? He's riding on a horse. And he's shooting at Brandon Lee the entire time. With a rifle. And Brandon Lee's like, hmm, it's too far away. I'm going to walk without any cover or any, like, precaution this is whatsoever. Like that, this is the moment from Tombstone where he's like, just like, no. And he, like, walks at the people as they're shooting at him. Like, have you seen Tombstone? Is, is this the with... Um, Wait, Sam uh, Elliott? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Son of a bitch! No! Anyways, there's a scene in that where like they're shooting at him and he's like, they think he's gonna die, and he's just like, no, and he starts like walking at the people as they're shooting at him and just murders them all or whatever. Um, and it reminded me of that. It's just that moment where he's like, he's out, he's such a badass that he doesn't even care about the bullets. He's just like, I'm just gonna walk right at you, yeah. shoot you. Dead. 
Oh. So fucking dumb. How does that guy miss that many times? I know he's on a horse, but like, if you're a bad shot on a horse, maybe hop off the horse and then shoot him. You have a rifle. He has a pistol. Yeah. Do it from very far away. Nif- Apparently, that was that was the last round too, because whenever he put up his gun, it was <laughs> empty. Yeah. Like the uh, the. Brandon Lee, yeah, yeah, yeah. the slide was cut. And then, and then the guy, of course, fired every single round and didn't have any backup ammunition. So it's like, it. What it reminded me of was like Rocco from uh, Boondock Saints. Yeah, where they send him in to kill those nine Russians or whatever with a six shooter. Six shooter. (sighs) Nine bodies, genius. What the fuck were you gonna do? Laugh the last three to death, funny man. Yeah, yeah. It's so. Dumb. And that scene is so weird and makes no sense. Uh, also, she has a machete. Like, she gets a sword. And I, she, I don't know if she ever uses it, but she has a sword. Yeah. She picks it up from, like, the first guy yeah, they murder you, in the desert, and she just carries it around which, with her. By the way, if you're going to sneak up on somebody, it's very important to scream when, and yell sneak attack. Sneak even. attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Ah! It's great. Oh, it's so fucking dumb. Um. So, but anyways, they they get, they get the horse, so now they can at least yes. move faster. They've got a horse, and so they can uh, they can kind of move on. Oh, he he fights another guy. Uh, he uses pocket sand. I think this is the guy yeah. where he comes out of the <laughs> sand. He's like <laughs> hits him in the face with the pocket sand. Pocket sand. Yeah. Yeah. And as he's winning this fight, um, this is after he wins this fight. This is when she shows up. Uh, with with the horse. Oh, they also have an as you wish scene where they fall down the dunes together. And I was so this whole time where he's walking through the dunes, I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity, Kyle, for him to be fighting a guy and jump on the guy and surf him down the dune, yes. punching him <laughs> that in the would face. Be incredible. It was right there for you. Uh. <laughs> Movie, come on. But uh, they ride the horse into town. Into town, get a hotel. Wait, I'm, I'm curious on where the horse is at now, but whatever. The that's... guy, he tells him, hey, take it, feed feed my ride, take oh, it yeah. around the corner, and uh, take care. Feed him and park him around the corner. But uh, they, they, get, they get a room, and <laughs> they ask for their clothes. They to needed be, like uh, a new suit or whatever. He's pressed. like, yeah, press my suit, and we got a dress or whatever. <laughs> How long will that take? Three hours. Make it make five. It five. <laughs> Three hours? Could you make that five hours? Thanks. Pro-life tip. Anything past three hours, you're just lying to yourself. <laughs> like, you're just... <laughs> come on. You kidding me? Five? You needed that extra two hours is really going to make the big... I mean, they did take a nap, I guess, so maybe they were, like, building it, like building in, like, sleeping time. But Jesus Christ, after like two hours, you're going to need like some to hydrate and, and like a meal. Like that's that's come on. Getting some diminishing returns at five hours of fucking. That's all I'm saying. You're losing some fluids. <laughs> yeah, it's just diminishing returns of like energy expenditure versus pleasure there at five hours. I, I, whatever. Two. OK, five. What are you doing? <laughs> There's, there's a reason those commercials say after four. Yeah, hours. exactly. It's not it's not good for anybody at that point. Um, uh, so she goes out to do something. We don't. I don't remember what she's doing. But she leaves. Shop, she says uh, going out well, shopping. She said she's going out shopping, but, but I think she, she was doing something. Well, else. she saw the people who were coming after. her Oh, that's right. And uh, so she hot wired their car. Yeah, and she runs off, uh, and then she calls him, and she's like, "Hey." Uh, I found Kalishnikov and I fucking killed him. Yep, murdered his ass. Uh, what about Kalishnikov? He's dead. You killed him? Uh, so why don't you go to the German guy's place and I'll meet you later. Also, it's instantly nighttime during the show. Yes, <laughs> immediately nighttime. Uh, and so he drives to the, the German guy's compound or whatever and he <laughs> electrocutes a guy. In the electric fence, he just throws him into the electric fence and drives. That's not the first because we didn't we didn't mention. So like the uh, Eckhart guy who is mm-hmm, like the German guy, the, uh, the, he always wants like the most dangerous game. He's out yeah. As far as he gets into a fist fight on top of a building with Brandon Lee. Does he? <laughs> oh, oh, we have to talk about this because it's that? fucking crazy. I, I er, er, reverse. So I he's getting that. he's get, like he's he's giving him a fair chance or whatever fight. So, That's coming up. We're not there yet. That's after he gets to the compound. I have that note coming up here in a second. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, it's right now. It's because he, so he breaks into this place and then he finds those guys in the cages and then he falls in a pit and then he wakes up and it's the next day. Oh, okay. And this is when that scene happens. They wake him up and they're, uh, the, the German guy unlocks him and brings him into his, his big room. And this is so annoying. He goes, I like to give my, my victims a fighting chance or whatever. And they walk into this room with walls covered in weapons. weapons. And yeah. you're like, oh, yes, let's do it. This is going to be, this, once, this is it. Once again, this felt so much like the death ring where they, yeah. they like, choose your weapon. Off exactly. The wall. <laughs> I like to give them a fighting chance. Here's a guy walk into a room, wall covered in weapons. There's swords and guns and all kinds of shit. Kyle, they don't use a fucking one of <laughs> no, them. Fuck you, movie. Come, you cannot. With this type of movie, <laughs> you cannot set that up and then not do That is bullshit. Dur I will say also during this fight, so like this building looks very old. It looks very, like, very in the like, expensive in how it was designed and stuff. Everything about this is look, and obviously they were like either renting this or being like, hey, museum or something like that. Or yeah, it might have been a museum or something. Them. They came so fucking close to breaking that stairwell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, if I were the owner of that, I would have been like, oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Uh, with a fucking whole room full of weapons, yeah. they just punch each other. No, they, yeah, they, they, they punch each other, and they end up on the roof, like you were talking about. They they fight their way, they've beaten their way up, and they end up on yes. the fucking roof of this place. And they just they're just decking it out on top of the the roof of this building, and they get t they both rip, fall yeah, off, just, or they both I don't know. They're somebody like tackles each other the off. other person off. Yeah, well, they and they're both, both falling. They both fall off the roof, like two stories down to the. <laughs> 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 Ground. That car gets impaled. Yeah, by a fence. Does he? Yes, like right out of uh, Glimmer Man. Oh, yeah. I fucking missed he just, that. He just impaled. On I, I missed that because I got distracted by the fucking ninja that shows up, <laughs> yeah, Kyle. <laughs> fucking ninja shows up. <laughs> Like that he, he sees his cor he sees his corpse like like pinned on this fence, and then he gets up and leaves, and then it hard cuts to a ninja coming out of nowhere. Fucking nin why is there a ninja here, Kyle? A white guy ninja <laughs> just think, shows you up. Think it's a KGB ninja. <laughs> what is this nonsense? It's fucking ridiculous. A ninja shows up, and again, <sighs> this movie sets up so many scenes that you think are gonna be cool. No, and he fights him for three seconds, this and is, then breaks. <laughs> This is, this is where the editing in this movie goes to complete chaos. Ugh. I was so disappointed. It's like, oh, a ninja fight. Okay, movie, I was already really disappointed when you set up a room full of weapons for a, a fucking duel to the death and didn't use any of them. All right, now you got a ninja. Let's, you got me back in. Punch, nope. punch, punch, break nope. his back. <clears throat> Moving on. Use any of your setups. Like, just, if you're gonna, okay, fine. <laughs> Fuck you. God damn it. Ugh. <sighs> Sorry, right. sorry, right, Brian. <laughs> so annoying. So, anyways, they get to the he gets to the mine. The mine. They call it a mine. Um, he gets to the mine, the diamond mine, where the she's being held captive. Mm. Um, and this is where Kalishnikov is. And also our uh, our Cuban militants. Yes, they're also now... they got captured because they did a bad job or something, whatever. Something like, like they fucked up. I, I will say, like this entire mining setup, it reminded me immediately. My mind went to Futurama. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking Temple of Doom, but they aren't children. There's that too. But there's there something about though. it that made me think of Futurama on the uh, one where they go to the um, relaxation planet, the resort, and it's just a mining facility where they force you to work. Look at that. The cots go out full, but they come in empty. It's criminally inefficient. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so she's she's I'll tied up. Uh, no, you're fine. I, just don't, I haven't seen that episode, so I had no input. <laughs> You're good. Um, so they start murdering all the slaves who have been mining these diamonds because they're done with their diamond mining mission, I guess, whatever. Which I don't know why they needed to do it because they were already had the big diamond, yeah. which I thought was the whole point was that the big one was like the one they needed to yeah. make the focusing crystal or whatever the fuck they're doing for the laser mission. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> laser mission. 
so she's tied to a chair and he's like doing like creepy i'm a i'm a creepy german or no he's he's soviet but whatever torturing her and stuff uh, and she fucking kicks him in the nuts mm. <laughs> she told him to collision a turn and cough uh and then um anyway so they show up and there's like gunfights break out and everybody's yeah, Ernest just Borden just running people. around with a shotgun yeah. I love that. He's just like Ernest Borgnine with a shotgun, like, <laughs> it's great. Um, oh, so good. And then, so they, they end up winning. But there's just a bunch of running gunning. Yeah, just you running around. All, these, all right. these militants there with with long rifles, with like, you know, yeah, good uh, military rifles long of rifles. Some sort, yeah. And Brandon Lee's going around shooting them with all a with a pistol. Yeah, yeah. Just it's like, you're not going to take all. advantage of the fact that you have a gun that outrages and that pistol by like several hundred yards. And there's like dozens of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Nobody classic. fires a shot at him. No, he, yeah, until the end when he actually gets fucking shot. Uh, but so he runs around, they murder everybody, and then they capture Kalishnikov. And this is so frustrating. They, oh, he gets what shot. A, yeah, this yeah. is where he gets so, shot. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty interesting how they set up because, like, they have They're Kalishnikov, like, different... like he, he's running below. Yeah, it's like. And then Brandon Lee's running above. Yeah. And it just, it, it's like it a, works pretty well. It's a dolly well. shot. It's kind of cool. Yeah, the camera kind of yeah, dollies they, they down there. Cut behind, he gets shot. And it's like, oh, you're bleeding internally. He gets shot through. The stomach or liver or it's right through like I an mean, important like, part, like part like through the kidneys and maybe the kidney yeah sometimes. which I get you could survive uh, potentially but he's he's he it's not like a he didn't get he didn't get like nicked yeah. he got fucking shot through yeah. and through like in, in yeah, the it, gut like, well once it like enters the abdominal cavity you got bad a news. lot of problems bad news bears uh so he falls down he's like oh fuck uh and then right as he's he's gonna kill him or whatever she shows up and saves the day um but they have him or I don't remember exactly how it transpires but they end up getting him um capturing kalishnikov and she's like no he's mine i'll take care of our little russian friend here and he uh, brandon lee's like okay and leaves her there with him you know the kgb <laughs> well again at this point it's like okay if she's a KGB agent, sure. But this whole movie, he has not known or seemed to understand that she's a KGB agent. And also, she's fucking fluctuates between complete incompetence and I'm a badass. And it's mm. in, like in this scene, if she's a KGB agent, she should just murder him. She should be able to handle this situation. But in fact, she just drags him four feet away and he gets away. Can't be bitten by a woman. <laughs> reminds me of a, like a part where they're on top of whatever hill, rocky hill they're on and he's like you got a gun that you're not afraid to use and you can try like the like the best of them who are you yeah <laughs> a kgb agent <laughs> the guy in the beginning of the <laughs> it's the whole setup for her she's a vet and that was another thing that we didn't even talk about i love the idea that they set up her character by going she's a veterinary scientist and kgb and i'm like KGB really needs some uh, like a vet or something. They got a lot of pets that they need taken. Like what? That's a weird thing. Yeah, they got the... they got to take care of Stalin's uh, guerrilla army. It's a weird thing for the KGB to like recruit or I don't know. It just seemed weird. It seemed strange. But he, she fucking Kalishnikov gets away because again she's now inept again. Like she just lets him yeah. get away. Um, and he takes her gets somehow gets her and drags her down into the mines. Mm. Um, the mines. Okay, anyways, uh, and and now again, Brand. So I don't even understand what's happening here. Brandon Lee leaves, is, and then stumbles back what across them. After. What is, what he, is after? he doing? The diamond? I thought he already had the diamond. Yeah, hey, I thought he already had the diamond. Yeah. I don't know because he leaves and then re meets up with them like five minutes later in the mines, and now she's his hostage instead of him being her hostage. And yeah, I, I don't understand what he was doing in that five. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, but he. he Brandley's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Shoots him a bunch. But the movie did at least set this up. When we saw him prepping, Kalishnikov prepping to go yeah, to this, he put on a bulletproof, bulletproof vest of some sort. I will say, the fall that whoever the actor or stunt double took down those rocks looked painful as shit. Also, I don't give a shit about the, I was about to say, I don't give a shit about the bulletproof vest. He died because he fell like down into a cavern and slid head first into a bunch of fucking rock. Like the fact that his, okay, sure, the bullets didn't kill him, but the fall 40 feet down into a cave head first would have fucking killed but him. Harry, what if they shot you in the face? <laughs> God, or what if you fell on a stalagmite, huh? Because Jesus Christ. 
So they're like, oh, okay, he's dead, woohoo. And they go out and they're all celebrating. <laughs> and this is where we find out in this moment, he's not his daughter. Or she's yes. not his daughter. Ernest Borgnine shows up and he's like, look, your daughter. And Ernest Borgnine's like, what? It's not my daughter. No. I thought she was your daughter. That is not my Liebchen. I have never seen her before in my life. Mm -mm. Turns out she was sent by, by the, the CIA. CIA. She is a CIA, but she's still a... What? She was there to help Kyle, or she was there to help G Michael, Mikhail, mm. <laughs> Mikhail Gold. Um, and she's not actually KGB, but she is CIA. But then that doesn't still explain why she was so useless for so much of the movie if she's a CIA agent. Fucking none of that plot line works but at all. Kalishkov, so Kalishkov... What he what he did before this whole thing transpired? Planted bombs. Planted bombs with timers on it to 10 blow minutes. up the mines. And he crawls up from the mines <laughs> and then gets over on a ridge and just screams gold <laughs> with, with a gun and blows up. And then explodes. <laughs> Fucking explodes. It's amazing. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, that was easy. And they're leaving. They're getting in the <laughs> jeep to head out like, of there. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get out. Let's get the fuck out of here. And the smoldering live corpse <laughs> of Kalishnikov. Ugh. He is so comically in burnt yes, rags. Yes. It's amazing. And he's like, not dead yet. <laughs> and they just run him over. They run him into a brick wall. Drive him through a brick wall. And then they, they get out and they see his body like under the rubble. And I'm like, Bro, quadruple yeah, tap. Yeah, double tap. Yeah, like, you no, know, at this point, it's like fucking quadruple tap. You gotta fucking get in there and, yeah, you gotta make sure he's dead. Holy shit. Uh, and then I love, they're like, all right, now let's get out of here. Camera pushing, freeze frame on that Brandon Lee smile. Oh, man. <laughs> Theme song. Messing every man. <laughs> What a movie! Uh, I love it. It's good bad. I would say it's good bad. I I would also say it's good bad. It, I was disappointed that it didn't deliver on some of the setups for like it could have been incredible. Oh yeah, it had the potential. Like the if that if that dual scene with the German guy, they like kept pulling swords off the walls. You think they and, shot a bunch of stuff and they got the dailies back and they were ruined or something? Like I that? think they want. I think no. I think the script said. Then they walks into this room, wall covered with weapons, blah, 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 and they duel fighting. But then they didn't have time to actually choreograph mm. this big elaborate fight with a bunch of different... Because, I mean, it's one thing to do, like, some fist fighting and stuff. It's another thing to, like, like with like swords. for the German and, dude, they, they clearly had him for, like, two days of shooting. He's not in a whole... Yeah, he only shows up in a handful of scenes and, like, wearing the same thing every time. Mm. Um, I think they just didn't have time to choreograph a big elaborate fight with a bunch of different weapons. So you think you think time they were just getting crunched on time? Yeah, I, I think that's what it was. Which would, would explain why the ninja just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, well, we gotta add something. In. And ninja comes out, and they're like, also we don't have time to choreograph a big elaborate fight with a ninja, so he beats him in like four punches, and then yeah, and breaks, breaks him some WWE yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like he breaks him like Bane breaking Batman, like fucking whatever. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I think they had I think they had loftier goals and just either budget or time or whatever just limited what they could do. Um, but it still works. It's still a fun, wacky movie. Uh, Brandon Lee is charismatic enough lead, um, and the, her, him and the, the the Alyssa have okay chemistry. They're kind of fun together, despite her uh, infuriating character <laughs> details. I don't whatever. KGB. <laughs> How can you shoot a gun? Cause she's fucking KGB. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, it's good bad. Uh, mm. It's it's good bad. It's on YouTube. Yes, you can watch it on YouTube. There are multiple YouTube. versions of it on YouTube. There you go. Laser Mission from 1989. As always, you can do us a giant favor. We're heading over to patreon.com slash GB or BB. Support us for two, five, however much dollars a month. Get access to early access uh, and some bonus content and all that sort of good stuff. <sighs> Kyle, I have a podcast called This Film Was Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, we will be in the middle of our series where we are talking about the never ending story. Oh, boy. Wait, it's a based on a book. <laughs> yeah, it is, in fact. Uh, and we'll be joined by uh, April Litmansky of No Such Thing as a Bad Movie podcast. Uh, if you've oh. listened to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie podcast, April will be joining us um, to break down for both episodes, uh, Never Ending Story 1 and 2. Uh, so, yeah, check that out over on any of the podcast places. Kyle, 
You have a Twitch stream sometimes. Yes. Twitch.tv slash GBRBB underscore Kyle. Kyle. GBRBB underscore Brian. Uh, I haven't done anything in a while. I need to do something. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Nailed it. Uh, you can also buy merch, tpublic.com. Just search for Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad. Get a variety of anything from mugs, uh, laptop Pillows, bags. <laughs> shirts, masks, laptop bags. Uh, literally just yeah, dozens just of items. Tons of things. Go figure out. Go find some stuff and buy it. Great. Supports the channel. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, you got a movie. Yes, yes. Might uh, as well mention it again. Mo- interviewing Big- we'll stop inter- mentioning it here for yeah. too long. Interviewing Monsters and Bigfoot. Uh, by the time this comes out, it'll be roughly about the time it'll hit stores. Great. Uh, Walmart in the Midwest. Walmart <laughs> in you. the Midwest. Hear you. Yeah. And you can watch my work. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, keep watching movies. Especially. Especially. Laser Mission must be on some sort of laser mission. He's a must never man.